we've had a little discussion about ESG, environmental social governance here, but you really can tell us how do you get it done. Everybody seems to think it's a good idea in the abstract, but why does it get translated into the real world? It's actually relatively simple. Um, ESG is an analytical discipline. It's not a style, it's not a trend, it's not, it's not a strategy. ESG is research, it's investment research, and it has to be done in the course of the investing in, frankly, anything. Yeah, so one day we're not gonna say, uh, people won't say ESG investing or SRI or values-based investing or impact investing. It's investing, period. ESG is an analytical tool, all right? So if you think about it that way, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of how much money we can move towards right. impact investing. But how do you get from a marketing slogan to actually changing the real world? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as an example, we mentioned the SASB, right? Yeah. So this is, yeah. so SASB, which by the way, is part of what BlackRock said they're embracing, right. mm -hmm. that's huge. Because with SASB, what we begin to do... stands for? The Sustainability Accounting Standards Board. Right. right. All right. And you're creating the metrics around this. It's actually not metrics. Mm -hmm. It's more like... Um, we can call it metrics, but it's corporate disclosures. Exactly. Corporate right. disclosure of material ESG exactly. factors. Right? And so we're just... This is a piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Right? And once we have that infrastructure, we get better data... Right? The data providers can do something better with it. The index providers can rely on better data. The ETFs can rely on better data. Right now, there is systemic flaw in the system, and that's problematic. I was going to ask you, a lot of people do want to allocate more mm -hmm. to uh, sustainable investments, to impactful investments, to ESG investments. Why is it that they can't find the right opportunities? Okay. Well, they can if they give it a little more effort, right? <laughs> right. But, you, right. I mean, the opportunities are out right. there. Sustainable investment in ESG analysis mm -hmm. does not limit your opportunity mm -hmm. set. It should so expand great. it, right? It does expand mm -hmm. it. It gives you more predictive insight. Exactly. The issue is um, that they're kind of, well, actually, there's four issues that we have to think about. We have to think about data quality. Mm -hmm. We have to think about the language of sustainability. We have to think about the fear that there is some sort of concessionary return, right? right? Okay. And then we have to worry about the fear or the, the myth that we're breaking a fiduciary duty. Mm -hmm. None of those are real. But we have to make sure people know that. So it's, you know, that's why BlackRock's move is so important. Well, that's my question. Is it that important? As you read that letter, does it really make a difference? It's not that they per se are making a difference. It's that they're speaking about it, the consciousness of this raising is making a difference. And just, we need to have context, right? Think about the magnitude of the problem, right? Take every dollar of BlackRock's AUM, seven trillion dollars. If we took the seven trillion dollars today, it would give us about maybe three years of the capex, the spending that we would need in alternative energies mm -hmm. to transform the economy. Wow. That's it, right? Wow. So their whole asset base is not enough. Right. Their voice starts to move people, you know, and when you can move people, then you can move money. Yeah. Well, I think, I'm just curious because, I mean, when I was working, which is about 10 years ago, we did so, you know, corporate social responsibility reports. We had a pretty good story in all these areas of inclusion on sustainability and all that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We pitched it like crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I pitched it, investor relations pitched it, and we didn't have a receptive, but no one did much mm -hmm. about it. I shouldn't say, we thought we could get people to move into our stock mm -hmm. based upon the things we were doing. Mm -hmm. And other than the financial results and cash flow, no, not many people really move. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you think has changed? It's only been 10 years, I mean, right. so what is it? You know what's changed? And this is the coolest thing. I mean, we, can do, we did a meta study. It's called Sacrifice Nothing. And we can look at 2,200 reports out there, and the vast majority of them show when you do ESG analysis, not only do you not give up returns, uh, in many cases, you do better, right? Yes. So when it comes to, f in the final analysis, it's always going to be about financial performance, mm -hmm. right? right? And so once people realize those four myths, once we, we put them to rest, money's going to start to flow. And so BlackRock, I mean, there's lots of ideas that we would love to give with BlackRock and partner with them on thinking about, you know, those four factors. Data, 
data right. and measurement. Yes. These are two of the issues we have to be thinking well, that's about. That's stock picking. What happens in a passive world? Exactly. The world's going passive, exactly. right. not going active. Right. Uh, well, actually, it should, arguably, <laughs> because if everyone's just hugging the benchmark, frankly, who cares? But um, well, it'll, it'll perform uh, at the benchmark, whatever that happens right, to be. Right. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Um, but here's the issue: these indices are being created based on flawed data, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if everyone just comes to terms with that and moves towards getting standards for corporate disclosure, standards that give us predictive insight into investment outcomes, then, you know, the indices and everything else become better, you know, um, proxies for performance. But here's the thing. I, I can't remember. You'll know. Which economist said that um, great investing is anticipating the anticipations of others, right? <laughs> Index investing, passive investing, is not, not anticipating. Right. It's not proactive. It's not innovative. And great managers, active managers, know that they're going to invest in innovation, right? Then they're going to be able to outperform over the long run. So when everyone's like freaked out. Which is why it's happening more and more on venture and private equity right. and less on public markets. Because that's what. That's exactly yeah. it.